I hate capitalism. I know it's not a popular thing to say in America, but I have always had the feeling that most Americans actually do. My freedom has often been won by speaking out. So I want to continue to speak out against capitalism, and I would like to give you a couple of examples. I'm not going to pull any kind of theory out of my hat, no tricks, but I want to take you back to middle school civics class. I remember, and this was, you started to learn about it, and this was, for me, uh, in my generation, quite significant because um, I was learning about um, democracy at a time when there was the Iron Curtain, and then it fell. So you go to this middle school civics class, and you're being taught, you know, we were, we were, we were towing the line, we were talking about communism, um, and at the other side, at the other pole, was what we had. Um, it's like we were taught as if Europe did it, but we just did it better. Um, we have democracy. Now, democracy, 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 and we always kind of hid the idea of capitalism. We would talk a great length about uh, communism, and how it was so bad for property owners, but we wouldn't equally tease apart what capitalism was and how capitalism related to our political system. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying on the communist side, we would look at an economic and a political system. And then on our side, I thought, okay, I'm, I, I mean, I remember wondering this as a kid. Okay, so if that's our political system, if it's based on democracy, then how is our um, economic system so undemocratic? And this is what I think that Michael Moore's new movie has really placed into the public eye. Like, I love the movie The Corporation, um, which is, it's a docu-film, you know, and so I think that Michael Moore and his style is, is more accessible, more popular, um, but for those of you who are interested to even, I haven't seen Michael Moore's film, but I'm just saying to tease apart uh, in some more and concrete ways about how the corporation has really come to not just infiltrate our political system, so how capitalism has usurped democracy, but, but literally how the corporation steers democracy. Um, and I want, I want people to think about that. Like all the evidence, you know, we can, de we can debate about, but I just noticed that we need to come back to the fact that as Americans, we don't even allow ourselves to have the conversation about um, an economic system because we often revert to scare, ta scare tactics, capitalist, socialist. And the interesting thing about, um, I mean, excuse me, communist, socialist, the thing about it is that socialism is, a, you could say, um, an economic, an eco-political system. Eco-political. Economic political system. But we, but even, even still, we have this, we don't tease apart democracy and capitalism and what our relationship is to them. So we keep throwing out these buzzwords, silencing any discussion. And I know people out there who just, I mean, they, they treat Obama as if he's a, um, the warmonger that Bush and his cabinet was carrying guns. I mean, as if the, as if the Negro's about to tear down the Constitution. I mean, that's how challenged people feel. And that's how sort of indoctrinated into this way of thinking where we don't even think. That's what I find very frightening about the United States. Is we don't even talk about what we're, what we're saying. And, and I'm not saying that I hate capitalism. And I know a lot of people are looking at me saying, well, you know, your ass was bought and sold on the auction block. So, of course, you hate capitalism. Well, yeah. I've actually seen auction blocks where my ass was bought and sold actually see modern day auction blocks where, you know, um, little black and tan uh, faggots from all over the heartland go to these cities all around the country selling ass. And that's how difficult things are in a nation that has, you know, so few people controlling so much wealth. And so many people, not even having just basic basic, basic, basic kind of things. I mean, um, 
It just has happened with emancipation as nation sort of the, the systems that capitalism um, has produced have almost had to crash in order for more people to wake up. You know, the, the sneeze that they say white America gets that turns into pneumonia for black America, we've been suffering greatly. I mean, since the crack infested 70s, since, you know, the federal move to squash the Black Panther movement or the Black Power movement, Black Empowerment is really what it was. And there is a difference between Black Power as a fist, as in Black Empowerment, as in pride. And so the crack that was just dumped into our communities to sort of undermine that project, from then on, you know, we're just hemorrhaging. And now that, you know, this bulk of Americans who just don't have basic things like, you know, safe schools, clean water, clean air, um, advanced technology, access to education without, you know, the, this huge burden of school loans. Um, but people are going bankrupt and not even being able to stay in their homes over health care. That's how bad capitalism is. That's how bad capitalism has undercut democracy because surely a, a people would not guide themselves to crash. You see what I'm saying? Surely, if democracy were being applied to our economic system, we wouldn't have derivatives upon derivatives upon derivatives. And, and an entire economy, you know, living on interest and just moving around money, pushing around paper, really, another layer of bureaucracy. We would actually have, you know, safer schools and neighborhoods, cleaner air, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We wouldn't be, our financial system wouldn't crash, caving in, of course, because of and with you know, healthcare system, you know, just ailing educational systems, um, you know, segregation and strife, social segregation on class, race, you know, we wouldn't have all of these things and they're all happening. You know, it's almost, it's on revelations type, you know, proportions that our society is undercutting itself. So hence, you know, we look at Barack and Michelle Malia and Sasha is that they are our saviors. But we're going to get it different this time, and, and here's why. We have movies like The Corporation, which declare that the corporation is insane. <laughs> we have, you know, movie makers like Michael Moore, and I do my research. I know that we've had people who, we always have people who speak out, and luckily so. Luckily, there is a Homer Plessy who says, you know what, I'm going to sit on this bus. And I dare you to find out that I'm not white. Or Rosa Parks, you know, 70, uh, 60, 70 years later, I'm going to sit on this bus and I dare you to justify to me why we can't live together. So if you don't have people like that, constantly resisting that system, then you... So I ask ourselves, you know, I ask, I ask where are we now? And I see that we're not going to get that kind of movement anymore. We may not march. But you know what we can do? We got videos. We have, we have the net. Um, we have information exchange. And I think that it's still being born and we haven't quite figured out how to make it um, a more potent agent tool of social change, but we can make the net one as powerful as the marches. Because I think that our society, as powerful as the Civil War, and we can turn something as radical as the Civil War into something nonviolent through the net. We can actually have dialogue. Perhaps, it, perhaps the net provides that necessary distance across racial lines, across class lines, for people to say, you know what, I'm going to consider you know, capitalism. Well, what is it? Not just to say, I don't want to hear anything about anything that's not Christian and God-fearing and capitalists. I mean, it is like that where I'm from. That, I mean, that's the level of conversation in Kentucky for a lot of people. It's, just, it's not Christian and God-fearing. I don't want to hear about it. But do you even ask yourself, well, what, what do you mean Christian and God-fearing? I mean, this whole question of do you mimic Jesus' life or is death the crucifixion, martyring yourself, crucifying yourself? Do we actually engage life rather than engage destruction and death?